my Discovery 3 has a severe air leak. It's always down on the front left corner and that's what we are trying to find today. We also got a lecture about if you can handle a discovery so you think twice before you buy it. That's going to be the topic of this video because fixing an air suspension is really like feeding your baby one day, okay? But it will be hungry again. <laughs> if you are one of those people who posts on Facebook when you get a red indicator light on the dash, uh, did anybody have that before? Then you should think twice before you get a discovery because if you write a Facebook comment keeping poor Tim McKnight busy without even reading your owner's manual or googling the problem on that group where you posted it for at least 10 minutes, you should get yourself a Toyota. That's the better vehicle for you. Then you can make posts like, oh, look at that. I found this in the trunk. What could that be? Other Toyota guide in posting. Oh, those are tools. You can throw them away. You don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> or another Toyota guide in posting. Are those fishing hooks? <laughs> You definitely should not drive a 16-year-old Discovery if you don't even know what the dash indicator means and you have to ask a Facebook group, okay? It's a suspension fault and it only happens when I go downhill. That way, right behind that corner, the fault comes. What I do before I even start is I put the iCar Soft ready, you can see it behind, already in the window to clear the fault. All I have to do when the fault comes is press OK and I can drive on without having the orange warning light. It's not a limp mode fault, but it's annoying. See if we have a leak somewhere. I'm gonna raise him up into off-road height and I already popped the hood. I'm gonna get to the fuse box and take out the third one from the bottom. I hope I can do that. Oh, yes. And the car is in off-road height. You can see it clearly and we'll see if it drops somewhere over the course of this remaining day. And even I can do that. So everybody can do that. Reach the hood. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Now look at that. It's now just about four hours later. Look how high he is in the rear. And look how much he dropped on the front left side. We apparently have a leak. The other side is also down a little bit just because the front left side is but the leak doesn't appear to be here it's just because it's tilted now on the other side and also here it looks just fine if you remember Christian and I rebuilt the front valve we bought new o-rings and if you remember we were not happy with that because not all o-rings were included and we couldn't change them all. We, we expect it to be the valve block. And, but we're gonna see that tomorrow morning. Now that car hasn't given us any trouble in a long time. I mean, just your brake switch light faults, you know, that's not important stuff and it's not difficult stuff. Mall crawler has been a pain, the new mall crawler and other cars like you remember Joachim's and uh, Rainer's discovery. So we haven't really worked on that, except for my nice CB radio. But that wasn't a maintenance or repair video. That was a modifying video. So we haven't had to do any major repairs on that one in a really long time. But now we have to get him ready for TÜV. The air suspension fuse. I just love that car so much. Oh no, I can't. Oh, maybe here. Oh. My Discovery 3 has a severe air leak. And that's what we are trying to find today. Christian is spraying it with soapy water. We suspect it might be the valve. Even so, we refurbished it. Thank God, there is no leak. Christian is taking this mirror. He can see everything, even so you can see. So we're taking the valve cover out.
it's not so bad. We checked everything with a mirror long enough. That would have been easy, you know. <laughs> when we put in our winch, we might have, yeah, I don't know, squeezed it and damaged it. But I actually assume that since it's always the front left side that is down first, that it's a line from the valve to the shock. Oh my God. It's Saturday, we can do that. Now I'm gonna give him the spray. So remember, if you have to take the wheel arch out, like we have to do now, there is one hidden screw. Otherwise you rip it off. Yeah, we are gonna leave it out now. <laughs> We've showed it so many times. And Christian knows how to take out the fender without breaking any clips. He has done that so many times. It's out. Yeah. There's a suspicious connection here, but it doesn't look like it's rubbed through. So we can't find the leak. It's not an obvious leak. What we are going to do now is remove the wheel arch on that side also. Looking like the ultimate badass mobile. <laughs> we have access now to all of the front air suspension parts. You see, we have taken off the wheel arch on the other side too. Christian's going to spray everything again. And we hope that will find the leak. Now he's just turning the wheel so he has better access. Oh my god. Yeah. Still searching. We found the leak with the gap tool. Here you can see it. It's leaking right out of this connector. Oh, I got an email with that problem to speak. Okay. So yeah, let me explain this. And you hear it now too. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. <laughs> you hear it? That is an unusual noise. And also those bubbles are quite unusual. <laughs> yeah. The problem with these valves is that they have intermittent leaks. The leaks come and go. And they come and go as you cycle the suspension day in, day out. And some days they are sealed and some days you cycle them and then there is maybe a little bit of debris stuck or contamination stuck in the O-ring and then they leak. So that is difficult to diagnose. We could not find it statically just by sitting there. We had to cycle the vehicle up and down using the gap tool, but you could do this also with your regular Land Rover key by pushing the buttons here. The vehicle would go up and down. And now we clearly got the problem. All we got yeah. to do now is buy a new valve because we already rebuilt this one. And it's a plastic valve and it's 16 years old. And you're gonna get me an OEM and not aftermarket. <laughs> I'm not going to go after market and start all over again when it's minus 10 degrees. They make such nice, cheesy, cheap ones. And she wants an OEM. Yes, Land Rover, uh. you know. So the plan for today is we'll put the winter tires on our Mercedes B-Class because we are waiting for parts and I want to be ready. I don't want to drive with summer tires a new to me vehicle. I've never ever driven the B-Class. I've successfully avoided that vehicle. <laughs> I wonder if Australians even know what a winter tire is. Oh, yeah, or do they a, have them in their country? Let's do a winter tire lesson for Australians. These are real closed shoes. Okay, this is the opposite of sandals. They even have like a steel toe in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now you guys already know 50%. So these are the winter tires, what came with the vehicle when we bought it. They're not the greatest, but they're better than the summer tires. There is the little snowflake, okay? And here it says MNS, that's mud and snow. I know you guys don't know what a snowflake is, but if water crystallizes when it falls down from the sky, that's called snowflakes, okay? <laughs> um, I know you guys learn a lot on our channel, and I really appreciate you guys watching. M&S, mud and snow, and the snowflake. That's what's necessary in Germany to comply with the law. We can ride regular summer tires um, as long as we want, but if we get involved in an accident, it would immediately mean we have a partial fault even if we are not on fault. So yeah. you can drive them, you don't really get a ticket or anything, 
but if you get into an accident you automatically have a partial fall. Snow tires have these fine ribs here to bite into the snow and on good tires they even made in such a way that they sharpen like a hamster tooth when they wear down so they stay sharp versus when you have summer tires they are simply missing these fine teeth. Also the compound of the tire is way different so yeah. when you drive snow tires or winter tires in summer you will wear them down really quickly because the rubber compound is much softer. They also are better on wet ground in cold temperatures. I don't own snow tires for the mall crawler on 20 inch rims so this vehicle um, is gonna suck in winter yeah. big time. He's so gonna be parked. For those of you who are gonna comment now that you can run all terrain in winter in the particular ones we have they are street legal here in winter because it does say MNS and it has the snowflake on it. And then we leave them on. There, no? Yes. Because their rubber compound is also much harder. Everything I just explained applies, okay, also to you. <laughs> but I want... but, okay, let's finish our rim job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> like in We Are the Millers, the boy also didn't get it. Hinten rechts. Yeah, HR. New struts. New discs, new and whatever. Oh, you're done with Brembo? No, we're not done, but I bought Bosch because they were cheaper. Oh. I mean, Bosch is just Brembo spelled wrong. So, it, so we talk them to 125. That might be interesting because she is driving the car now for the first time. She was reluctant to drive it until now, but now she's got no other choice next week because she has to wait for her vehicle. She wanted OEM parts and they have lead time. But because it's... My Freelander. Oh my God. The Freelander is here with the horses. Yes. It's still driven by him. Yeah. So I guess the car gets a pretty good cut from Vera here That's because she is not complaining. No, I love okay. it. The only thing what really sucks on this vehicle is because it's a naturally aspirated engine, it doesn't have a turbocharger, is in our area where we drive it, it, takes, liters. it takes a lot of gas. Right now uphill at yeah. least 10 or 11 percent and that takes its toll. For 10 kilometers. So even if we drive with our discoveries around here, they take like 12, 12 and a half and when I drive them in the city, they only drive, take like 10 and a half. So it's beautiful fall weather. Today we finally put my Discovery 3 back together. We did not get an OEM air valve. They weren't able to deliver it. So we actually are going to install the cheap as Amazon Prime air valve for a Land Rover Discovery 3 for 50 euros. He promised me if it doesn't work he's going to get me a OEM air valve. Oh. That's the only dirt the wall crawler ever <laughs> So, we cleaned up. What we also are going to do is put on the winter tires on my Discovery 3. I got two brand new ones. Only two degrees. So, oh my god. I'm so worried that he's not going to start or the crank's going to snap. Now, I want to hear the oil pump. It's been standing... Slowly. Now, of course, you don't need a lift to fix your air suspension, okay? But we're putting it over our lift because we're also going to replace the tires and that's much easier. Raise it up. Good. Stop it. Yeah, pin is in. Raise it. Yeah, it's perfect. Go up. Yeah, go up. Guess what we also have to do today. My TÜV is due actually we are three days over that's really bad but we were waiting for the part forever oh my god that's gonna be a bad day i'll take the nuts the air suspension is a really complex system but it is extremely reliable no matter what you hear in the internet on our vehicle here which is a 2006 discovery 3 we have all original parts installed on the air suspension system. If you discover a problem with your air suspension and you don't fix it, trust me, 
it will be like a cancer and it will get really bad. So if your vehicle is lowered down in the morning, when you enter it, okay, it's limping. That's like when you're waking up your dog and it's limping on three legs. You got to get it fixed, otherwise the dog's going to die. Same with the Discovery 3. The diagnosis actually this time was done by Vera. And I did a good job. She found out all by herself what corner of the vehicle has the problem. And then all I had to do is go there looking all smart, using some bubbly water, actuating everything and then detecting the problem. And then it was waiting for the part because we screwed up this order out of the UK and then we had to order Amazon after some time. Now all we got to do now is replace the air valve. We can put our new tires back on and take the car to a TÜV inspection and oh hopefully my God. we're gonna pass. Oh my God. Here you can see that the air shocks of Vera's car, 16 years old, 260,000 kilometers, are still OEM and they really badly corroded. But still, they are not the problem. They did not leak. <laughs> Bottom line is, you go look for a car where the first original air shocks last 260,000 kilometers under wet German conditions. So there is no reliability problem with those air suspension components whatsoever. You know, don't let the air suspension sit for anyway. months until you go off road yeah. and then. Um, if you do not use your air suspension and you always keep it elevated at one height, it will fail, in my opinion, sooner than if you cycle it from time to time because yeah. those valves do not get a good enough of an exercise. They will not see enough air volume to flush out dirt and debris or flush through dirt and debris. So if you, in my opinion, cycle it more often, you will have a longer life. One time we had a leak in the air tank and we found it and we welded it and it was all good. If I would have ignored that air tank, it would have gotten us a new air compressor. And that would have been only a secondary problem. So I can go on now for ages. These valves are really easy to take out. Ah, that is something nice. I also learned that not every vehicle, even high-end vehicle, have air struts. <laughs> so, I don't know if a Toyota has any. So the third one from the bottom up is the air suspension fuse. I'm, I'm wrestling this connector off without using any tools. Look what a beautiful condition connector this is after 16 years. There is no corrosion. The seals look intact. Everything is perfect. The reason the vehicle has such a bad reputation is because people are not able to handle it. And to put this in perspective, think about you getting yourself a Mercedes-Benz S-Class from 2006 for 7,000 euros. That's about the equivalent price, vehicle and kilometer range compared to a high-end Discovery 3. Do you expect to drive this vehicle without any problem? This car is called the queen of the road, okay? The queen is high maintenance. If you're gonna get yourself a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, you're gonna have to do either some work or you're gonna have to let your wallet do the work. That's the bottom line. I don't think Mercedes has a reputation of being low quality. It's just people are smart enough to not buy such a vehicle unless they are really dedicated and enthusiastic and then they will do it. But you can't just drive that vehicle without any problems. And it's the same with a Land Rover Discovery. This is a high-end vehicle. And when this vehicle breaks down, there are usually things breaking which break on other parts as well. The difference is, on this one, it's difficult to fix because you got four times the technology crammed into a little bit stupidly designed environment. So pieces are extremely hard to access and typically because people use too big of a wrench and too much force, they introduce secondary problems fixing one problem. When you have an engine where you climb into the engine compartment to change your spark plugs every four years, it's just simpler. I gotta stop lecturing for at least a moment now. If the fittings have the same thread, I will leave the OEM fittings on there because I don't see our fittings are leaking. So I got new stickers from the Czech Highland Adventure Team, a Land Rover Club in the, in the Czech Republic, and from Build Bear Tough. They send us a sign. That is such a cool sign and Christian's motto when he goes doing some electrical stuff. Thank you very much. It's such a great addition to our workshop. I sprayed these or I soaked them in WD-40. 
before I'm loosening them, okay? Yeah, I did a mistake. I should have used my gap tool to deflate the corners. Oh, I don't know if it's gonna pop now. No. I told you guys at least 20 times that you gotta buy a diagnostic tool before you buy your Land Rover Discovery. Because you need that tool when you inspect your vehicle the first time before you buy it. You All you need to do is Google Diagnostic Unit Land Rover Discovery 3 and you will find the major brands, which are low end but really good in my opinion is the iCarsoft. Which I use? That's the one Vera uses. She has an iCarsoft 930, but there are also better ones. And I use a high end unit, which is the Gap 2D diagnostic tool from the company Gap Diagnostics. I'm doing this slowly so the air can escape, okay, the air which is still in there. 16 year old frame with original yeah. paint. It has hardly just a little bit of surface rust here and here. Yeah. So what's the problem? Go look for a Toyota in Germany which looks like that. This is going to be a lecture video, okay? Yeah. Think twice before you get yourself a discovery. You might not be ready for it. It so. does look indeed the same. Yeah, don't screw them up. <laughs> the Land Rover driver is going to answer the post saying, Oh yeah, those are spanners, but you need five times more. Oh, guess what Fabian called this week again. He left his sunroof open. So we'll have a challenge if Christian knows the German word for a grease cup. For a grease cup? Um, Fettkappe. No, Stauferbüchse. Oh. <laughs> you didn't know that. No. So Vera got a new Land Rover Discovery Workshop manual in the hardcover version, yeah. which is no longer available today. A viewer sent this to us, Mr. George Lofink, out of Germany. And what else did you get from him? Oh, the workshop manual for the Discovery One. So all we need is the car now. If somebody yeah, wants to a donate a car. We're going to get a Discovery One as, yeah. as a project car. And, and that's really cool. We really like, yeah. I really like workshop books. So thank you, George, for sending this over to us. It will be in good hands and Vera will use it. And it rained inside the car. And of course, everything is wet and he got a transmission fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just because you get a transmission fault doesn't mean your transmission is screwed up. <laughs> Yeah, you had, left. He had the entire Senate Council full of water, okay? And then he leaves me this voice message like, oh, damn it, I had to get a rental car again to get to work. I never used so many rental cars. Well, on a Toyota, you could pour as much water in as you want and it would still run. Now, on this channel, we always show you content, how we fix our car or maintain our car, simply because we do not want to show you content where we make coffees. And what we really appreciate is if we get comments from Toyota drivers, okay? Toyota drivers coming over here watching our content is really rewarding for us. Yes. Because it shows us that this is not as boring as driving a Toyota. If they watch, you know, Toyota related channels, they got to watch at least somebody making breakfast, somebody making lunch making two times coffee in between and later on making dinner. In between they drive around on the planet. A Toyota video doesn't get away with at least making coffee twice. So thank you guys very much for coming over, watching our videos. We really appreciate it. I got comments on Christian's hat. It's in hat? English, it's called okay. bump hat. So if you Google it on Amazon, you have to Google bump head and then you get it. So you can see it is it has upholstery in here and it is also made out of plastic. It yeah. just looks like a baseball cap. I'm not used to work on a lift. We always used to repair the car over our pit. And in a pit you don't hit your head, okay? You kind of protect it because everything is above you. But with the with the lift, it was a real challenge for me to get along with it because I raised the car up as high as I want to be comfortable. But then things like the tires and stuff stick down, so I kept hitting my head and it got really bad. So I got me this hard head, which is originally from my brother, and that solved the problem. Yeah, I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done here. Listen. Yes. These fittings here, you put in a plastic bag and you put them in your car. So we oh, take, we take yes, these on in the one road. of my bags. Oh my God, I love that idea.
And the air valve is going into our Hall of Fame. That's like the most important fuse. I hope I have it as a spare. There's nothing obvious, but now he's going to activate that valve. You see my diesel heater is working. What I'm basically checking is that there's no air leak because the valve is now being activated. There's enough on it. There's no air leak. Now, what we gotta do now is put the vehicle back together here in the front. You're not all excited, so yeah. you can say that now in a better, more excited <laughs> voice. Okay, so we gotta put the front back together because there are no air bubbles coming out, which means the leak is fixed. At least for now it's fixed. As soon as we got the car back together, we gotta get our bi-yearly trip inspection and hopefully we're gonna pass. Oh my god, it's cold and wet and cold and I don't want to touch yet now anything wet, but Christian doesn't mind. The good thing if you have a two post slip outside is, is you can use your power washer. Yes, you can under body wash. So even though we have done that maybe a hundred times by now, it's still a puzzle every single time. Yeah. There's one missing here. What? Don't believe you. Yeah. Remember my box is full of clips? Yeah, it works good. Okay. I have to replace one clip. I just can't get them back together though. I'm not going to bother Christian or let me... 50 new ones, I'm gonna get a new one. <sighs> yeah. So. Missed it. Putting the window tires on. <laughs> and we are putting the good ones in the rear, the worn ones in the front. Even though I disagree. Yes, but our subscribers always tell us that's how it needs to be done. And there's always gonna be a huge debate you guys can have that debate, but we want to participate. Yeah. Okay, we gotta lift it up one more time and check for oil leaks. It is not 100% dry, but it's also not wet. Yeah. So I would say he can't say anything there. He can look inside here. Oh, he's gonna see oil here. wet now because oh. I power washed it. Yeah, that was a dumb okay. idea. Everything is coming down here. We're going to put in the headlights and torque the wheels to 140 Newton meters. And then we'll hope... Whoa. Oh my god, <laughs> then we'll hope the trip is still open. Don't do that. Don't upgrade a Discovery 3 to a Discovery 4. No, don't do don't that. Don't upgrade a cool car to a mall crawler. Yeah. You can buy a Discovery 4, but don't upgrade. If you have an upgraded one, downgrade it. <laughs> my red is black and plus is minus is connected correctly. Yeah. It's a cool grill, not the mall crawler grill. Done. We're spraying in closing mechanism. Before you go to your MOT or TÜV, check your lights. Yeah, fog lights. Yeah, yeah, no, shit, no TÜV. So, yeah, 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 yeah. indicator light. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's working. So, fog lights. No fog tooth. lights are not working. Yeah. I think you need them. Yeah. Where oh. are you going? We have to go to the TÜV. Was that the entrance or yeah. what? Well, you have to turn here. I guess we don't have the best maintained discovery, right? It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. So, Guess what? 
<laughs> I have the least maintained discovery tree on the planet yeah. just because Christian takes care of everybody else's discovery but mine. <laughs> so that was an embarrassing visit. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you do, please think about subscribing. In any case, don't unsubscribe. We thank our patrons a lot for their support and we'll see you next Sunday.